Ken says, can you please explain the difference in time and accuracy of the tests that are out there? Yeah, this is important as we use more and more of these at home tests uh, as to uh, what the window period is when you become detectable. So as a general rule, the at home antigen tests are about 50 percent thereabouts as uh, sensitive as the PCR molecular tests, meaning that they need more virus in the sample in order to become positive. Um, so it has important implications. If you've got symptoms and you're testing yourself, generally by the time you have symptoms, your virus level will be high enough that it will be detectable by one of these tests. So you can do one test, and if it's negative, you can have pretty good confidence that that's a real negative test. However, if you just, if there's someone in your household or somebody was at school or something that was positive and you've just been exposed, but you have no symptoms, there's about a three to five day window from that exposure where even if you got the virus, your virus levels may not be high enough to be detected by that test. So generally what's recommended is you do one test when you find out that you've been exposed. If it's positive, you know you're positive, but if it's negative, you can repeat that test two or three days later so that just in case you were in that window period where the virus level is rising, that second test will catch it if you're positive. And then after those two negative tests, you'll have a high degree of confidence that you're not infectious. Okay. Uh, Susan says, are the at-home tests the same as the rapid tests that you get somewhere? Uh, yes, they are. These are the rapid antigen tests, uh, antigen distinguished from the PCR tests. And they're basically the same. It's similar to an at-home pregnancy test, which a lot of people are familiar with. Works by the same kind of mechanism. All right, Vanessa says most home tests don't allow you to document the results. So how do we really know how, pe how many people are really positive? Oh yeah, we talked about it a little bit earlier. The, uh, the public health agencies are pretty good at making calculations and extrapolations based on all the data that's fed into them uh, from clinical laboratories like mine and all the formal testing laboratories. Um, it is encouraged. Uh, you can go to the website and report your own test results. Uh, some of the at-home kits have a QR code that you can scan and it takes you to a website where you can document your results. Um, so I recommend, you know, as many people as can do that, do that. More information is better. Um, but, you know, don't be alarmed if you know people are testing themselves and not 100% are reporting because the public health agencies are pretty good at determining, you know, how rapidly this is spreading. All right. Millie says, what test do you use to stop isolating? Ah, that's a good question. Um, these PCR tests, because they are so sensitive. Um, that they can detect, you know, a dozen dead RNA molecules from dead virus in your system long after. And we've had cases where a month or two after someone has recovered from their infection, a PCR test may still be positive. So if you're using the testing strategy to go back to school or back to work, uh, you should use an antigen test. Antigen tests, it turns out, because they need that higher level of virus are actually really good for doing this testing to go back to work or back to school.